بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا وقائدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وكرمنا بالنور الفام وأن ما علينا يا عظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قول أما بعد All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I testify that there is no God except Allah Almighty and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, inshallah tonight we'll be talking about a very important pillar in Islam. A pillar which is one of the foundations of Islam, one of the major aspects of Islam, one of the major issues that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had endorsed and emphasized on one of the matters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal, had destroyed nations because they neglected it, which is the zakat. The zakat, one of the pillars of Islam, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Islam was established on five pillars, on five foundations, and amongst those five, as zakah paying zakat first is la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah second is salah and then third is zakat and we all know that it's not a new information or new knowledge for us to know that zakat is one of the most important pillars of islam but what we need to know is how do we do or how do we pay zakat as i've realized a lot of people lack the knowledge of understanding the concept of zakat and how zakat is paid and who should pay zakat and so on. And before we get into the details of that, let us mention some verses and a hadith that speak about zakat and the importance of zakat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, in many verses where Allah azza wa jal refers to الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَوُوا الزَّكَاتِ Those who believe and they perform their prayers and pay their zakat. You'll find many verses in the Quran Kareem where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers as those who pray and those who pay their zakat. One of the major verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks clearly about the zakat where he says, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا Take from their wealth, Allah azza wa jal, He's saying to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, take from their wealth, referring to the people, take from their wealth, sadaqa. Here sadaqa, sadaqa means donation. And in the sharia, sometimes sadaqa is referred to obligatory donation, which is zakat. And sometimes is referred to voluntarily donation, which is normal donation sadaqa. But in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to the obligatory donation because Allah is commanding the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to take from their wealth where Allah is saying, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً Take from their wealth a donation. Donation referring here is the obligatory donation which is the zakah. تُطَهِّرُهُمْ It will purify them. وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا And, and clean the, their wealth, clean their hearts, clean their souls. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam to take from the wealth of the believers, to take the, from the wealth of the Muslims a certain amount that will speak about a percentage which must be given to who? To the poor. This is clear also in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam sent Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu to Yemen. What did he say to him? He said, you are going to people Ahl Kitab, the other people of scripture. Call him to the witness and the testification of La ilaha illallah and Muhammad Rasulullah. And if they obey you and follow that, then tell them and inform them that Allah Azza wa Jal had ordained on them five prayers during the day and night. 
And then if they follow that, then if they follow that, then tell them that Allah had ordained. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands them to pay a certain amount from their wealth to be given to their poor. So this is what we call zakah. A certain amount of money to be taken from the rich and to be paid to the poor. Not only that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about the zakat and he spoke about the importance of the zakat and he spoke about the obligation of the zakat but the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about how dangerous it is when people don't pay zakat when he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordained me to fight people. Allah azza wa jal had ordained me to fight people. Umirtu an uqatil an nas. I was ordained by Allah to fight people. Hatta yashhadu until they testify that there is no God except Allah and Muhammad is messenger. Wa yuqimu salah wa yu'tu zakah. I was ordained by Allah. I was ordered by Allah to fight people. This is fighting. To fight people until they testify that there is no God except Allah and Muhammad is his messenger and for people to start praying and for people to pay their zakat. فَإِذَا فَعَلُوا ذَلِكَ عَصَمُوا مِنِّي دِمَاءً وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ And if they obey me by testifying that there is no God except Allah and Muhammad is messenger and they start praying and they pay their zakat, then they had protected themselves, they had protected themselves and their blood and wealth from anything from me. This is a very clear hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. That's why at the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when a lot of people, a lot of Muslims, after the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, started to upstate Islam and leave Islam, when they heard that the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam passed away, many Arab tribes left Islam. Some of them did not leave Islam, but they left some of the pillars of Islam. Amongst us, a tribe that Abu Bakr heard that they still pray, they still fast, but they stopped paying zakat. So Abu Bakr stood up and he said, By Allah, does the deen of Allah reduce while I'm alive? Does the deen of Allah reduce while I'm alive? By Allah, I will fight them over a rope. I will fight them over a rope of an animal they used to give to the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. When Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu heard that Abu Bakr is willing to fight and is willing to declare war on a Muslim tribe that just stopped paying zakat, Umar came up to Abu Bakr and he said, why would you do something like that? These people still pray, they still fast, they still say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. The only thing they stopped is paying zakat. So Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu told Umar, Oh Umar, by Allah, I heard the messenger of Allah saying, I was ordered by Allah to fight people until they testify that there is no God except Allah and Muhammad his messenger and for them to fulfill their prayers and to pay their zakat. For them to fulfill their prayers and to pay their zakat. And if they do so, they had protected themselves, their wealth and their money from me. So this is a clear hadith that Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu heard from the messenger of Allah. Abu Bakr said, by Allah, after I heard the hadith from Abu Bakr, I supported Abu Bakr. After I heard that statement of the Prophet والسلام, from Abu Bakr, I supported Abu Bakr. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, alayhi salatu wasallam, made it very clear that zakat is an obligatory part, an integral part of Islam. And he sallallahu alayhi wasallam, not only that he made it clear, but sallallahu alayhi wasallam even main, mentioned many punishments, many punishments that will occur to those who denied paying zakat in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَالَّذِينَ يَكْنِزُونَ الذَّهَبَ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَبَشِّرُهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ يَوْمَ يُحْمَى عَلَيْهَا فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ فَتُكْوَى بِهَا جِبَاهُمْ وَجُنُوبُهُمْ وَظُهُورُهُمْ هَذَا مَا كَنَسْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ فَذُوقُوا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْنِزُونَ My brothers and sisters, and I especially say that to those brothers and sisters who neglect this integral and important part in Islam, those who do not pay their zakat. Allah Azza wa Jal says that those who hide their silver, those who hide their gold and silver, those who hide their treasures, treasures from gold and silver, and do not donate that in the path of Allah, then give them, give them the news that Allah will punish them a severe punishment. Give them the news that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish them a severe punishment. My brothers and sisters, you have these days, a lot of people find it easy to pray. And a lot of people find it easy to fast. And a lot of people find it easy to get a haz. But the most hardest integral part of Islam 
And the masharist pillar for the Muslims to implement is to pay zakat. To pay zakat. Why? Because the nafs, the soul is greedy. The nafs is so greedy that it doesn't want to give up the wealth. And that's why you'll find it, you find a lot of Muslims pray and fast and even get a has. But when it comes to paying zakat, they find it hard. Why? Because it's money. And people are attached to money more than they are attached to themselves. People are attached to their wealth more than what they are attached to their kids. People are attached to their wealth more than they are attached to their parents. Wealth. Wealth plays a big thing. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran al-Kareem, Al-Malu wal banuna zinatul al hayat al-dunya. That wealth and children, wealth and kids are the adornment of this dunya. And the scholars say Allah mentioned wealth before kids because wealth is a lot more attached to the heart. Money is a lot more attached to the heart than the kids. Than the kids. That's why people find it hard to pay zakat. And out of experience, I've realized that Muslims find every other pillar easy to fulfill except zakat. Zakat, it's so hard for so many Muslims to give up their wealth. Why? Because the heart is attached to the dollar. The heart is attached to money. The heart is so attached to that money when someone has $100,000 and then he's going to give $2,500 every year out of that. $2,500 for the sake of Allah. Straight away the shaitan comes and says, you could buy this and you could buy that and you could get with it this and you could get with it that. So straight away the, sh the nafs becomes so greedy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues in that verse. He says, يَوْمَ يُحْمَ عَلَيْهَا فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمْ This Gold and silver that you've been hiding, this treasure of gold and silver that you've been hiding, and you've been refusing to pay your zakat from, it will come to you in the hereafter. Fatukwa biha jibaum wa junubum wa It will become like plates of fire that Allah Azza wa Jal will torture you and punish you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you in the hell fire, and you'll be punished with your foreheads and your sides and your backs. And you'll be told, this is what you used to hide from your wealth. This is what you used to hide from your treasures, from the gold and silver. Then taste what you used to hide. Taste what you used to hide. My brothers and sisters, not paying zakat is a major thing in Islam. Not fulfilling the integral power of Islam is a major issue in Islam with a major punishment. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the hadith, مَا مِن صَاحِبِ ذَهَبٍ وَلَا فِضَّةٍ لَا يُؤَدِّ مِنْهَا حَقَّهَا إِلَّا إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ صُفِحَتْ لَهُ صَفَائِحْ مِنْ نَارِ فَأُحْمِيَ عَلَيْهَا فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمْ Anyone who does not, anyone who does not pay, anyone who does not donate in the path of Allah from the treasure they have from gold and silver, it will become plates of fire in the hereafter that Allah Azza wa Jal will punish them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish them with those plates of fire being heated over their bodies because of them refusing to pay zakat. And many, many other ahadith, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also refers that one of the reasons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the reasons that Allah Azza wa Jal will make a nation experience drought and hunger. And drought and hunger is a punishment from Allah. One of the reasons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a nation go through drought and hunger is when they stop paying zakat. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, مَا مِن قَوْمٍ مَنَعُوا الزَّكَاةَ إِلَّا بْتَلَاهُمُ اللَّهُ بِالسَّنِينَ No nation, no tribe had ever stopped Paying zakat, Allah Azza wa Jal will punish them with the drought. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them experience drought. And a drought is one of the worst things that a nation can experience. When there is drought, there's no living, there's no work, there's no money, there's no stock, there's no food, there's no this, there's no that, a lot of that. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he warns that any nation that stops paying zakat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them experience the drought. Another, another hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, مَنْ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ مَالًا فَلَمْ يُؤَدِّ زَكَاتَهُ مُثِّلَ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شُجَاعًا أَقْرَى لَهُ زَبِيبَتَانِ يَطُوقُهُ يَطُوقُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ ثُمَّ يَأْخُذُ بِلَهُمْ الزَّتَيْهِ ثُمَّ يَقُولْ أَنَا مَالُكْ أَنَا كَنْزُكْ Listen to this, my brothers and sisters. 
Listen to this, my brother and my sister. Those who specially refuse to pay their zakat has severe the punishment of Allah for those who do not pay their zakat. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, whomever Allah azza wa jal gives wealth, because the wealth is from who? From Allah. The wealth is from Allah. Whomever Allah gives wealth and refuses to pay their zakat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring upon them shuja'an aqla. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu describes what the shuja aqla, a snake, so ugly, that's got two pimples above his head coming and will come and surround you and be around you in the after will surround them and do not torture them with a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then it will say, Ana maluk, ana kanzuk. I am your wealth, I am your treasure. I am your money that you refuse to pay zakat. I am your treasure that you used to hide. Look at me today, a snake that will come and surround your body and torture you and make you collapse from this. This is why, because we refuse paying zakat. Allah gives us wealth and we refuse to give its right. What's the right of the wealth? The right of the wealth is to pay zakat. To pay zakat. And what's the zakat? Zakat is a simple amount of money. And why people refuse to pay zakat is because they are selfish. It's because they are stingy, they are greedy, they are scared that if they're going to take that money out, their money is going to drop. Their money is going to reduce. When the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says otherwise, the Prophet وسلم, says, Ma naqasa malum min sadaqa. Money does not reduce when you donate in the path of Allah. Money does not reduce when you pay zakat. Money does not reduce when you give for the sake of Allah. How could, you, how could your wealth reduce if you're giving it in the, for the sake of Allah? How could your wealth reduce if you are donating that money for the sake of the pleasure of Allah? You are investing with Allah. Any other company that you invest with, you are always liable to winning or losing, except Allah Azza wa Jal. When you invest with Him, you are always liable to win. You only win with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You only gain with Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ma naqasa malum min sadaqa, the money, the wealth, the wealth of anyone would never reduce from sadaqa. Would never reduce from donation. Your wealth will never reduce. Your wealth will never ever go away. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given to him a, when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given to him a sheep as a gift, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave it to Aisha and he said, oh Aisha, get rid of that sheep as much as you can. Donate from that sheep as much as you can. So Aisha donated with whatever she can donate from that sheep and she only left a thigh. She only left one part. So when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came back, he said, oh Aisha, did you donate? Did you donate from that sheep? She said, oh messenger of Allah, everything from that sheep is gone. Everything from that sheep is gone except the thigh. So what did the Prophet ﷺ say? He said, oh Aisha, you are wrong. You are wrong. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after Aisha said, everything from the sheep is gone except the thigh. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you are wrong. Everything from the sheep stayed except the thigh. Everything from the sheep stayed except the thigh. Why? Because it's gone for sabilillah. That means it stays. And whatever you keep for yourself, it's gone. It's going to go to the toilet. It's going to go. But whatever you keep for Allah Azza wa Jalla, give for Allah always stays. That's why my brothers and sisters, donating in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal is an important part of Islam. And it's a form of purifying the heart. خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا So they could, could purify themselves, purify their hearts, purify their wealth. And that's why the word zakah, the word zakah in Arabic means increase. The word zakah in Arabic means increase. Someone says that doesn't make sense. When I've got $100 and I give $2.50 out of it, my wealth had reduced. How could you call it increase? Well, in Islam it increases. And that's why Islam calls the money that you donate in it for the sake of Allah, it's called zakah, which means increase, not decrease. Which means extra, not that it reduces. And that's why the word zakah in Arabic means increase. But in the sharia, it is a certain amount of money. 
a certain amount of money, a certain percentage out of wealth to be taken and given to the categories of zakat. So it's a percentage. A certain amount of percentage or money to be taken out of your wealth and to be given to who? To the categories of zakat. And this is what we will talk about. We will talk about when do I have to pay zakat and who should pay zakat. First of all, let us start with who must pay zakat. Anyone pays zakat? Muslim or non-Muslim pays zakat? Mature or immature pays zakat? Sane or insane pays zakat? Wealthy or, or someone who's poor pays zakat? This is what we need to know. In Islam, it's only a mature Muslim who pays their zakat. A mature Muslim who must pay their zakat, regardless whether it's a male or female. A mature Muslim is responsible to pay their zakat. With mature or immature, there is that disagreement amongst the scholars, but we go with the madhab and we go with the, what the scholars say, that is a mature. A mature Muslim. So any mature Muslim must pay the zakat. Whether they are male or female. Whether they are sane or insane. Someone says insane, how could the insane person pay the zakat? Well, his guardian must pay the zakat on their behalf. So every mature male, female Muslim that have a certain amount of money must pay zakat. Okay, now understanding that part that every mature Muslim must pay zakat, then any Muslim with a certain amount of money must pay zakat. This is the next point. Not anyone with a certain amount of money pays zakat. So if someone has $100, does he have to pay, does he have to pay zakat? Someone has $1,000, does he have to pay zakat? Someone who's got a $10,000, does he have to pay zakat? There is something that we call nisab. In the Sharia, there is something called Nisab. Nisab, it is the amount of money that you must have before Zakat becomes obligatory on you. So not any amount of money, Zakat is obligatory on you to pay Zakat. Not any amount of money that you have in your hands that you must pay Zakat. There is a certain amount of money. There is a limit. Nisab means limit. There is a limit that you must reach before Zakat becomes obligatory on you. If you don't reach that limit, then zakat is not obligatory on you. So there is a limit. So not anyone with a hundred or two hundred dollars or a thousand or two thousand dollars must pay zakat. There is a limit that we must reach to. If we reach that limit, that's when zakat says, I am fard on you. But if you do not reach that limit, then zakat is not fard on you. So what's that limit? That limit is what we call nisab. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had made that limit to be valued with gold and silver. To be valued with gold and silver. And that's the best thing to value things, gold and silver. If you're going to talk about currencies, well, sometimes a currency goes up, goes down. 10 years ago or 20 years ago, one lira Lebanese used to be equal to one dollar American. Now one dollar, you buy 1,000 lira. So, so sometimes the currency goes up. It goes down. A year ago, one, uh, nearly two Australian, you buy one American. But now, American and Australian is equal. And that's why Islam values things with gold. Why? Because gold is a set market. Everything revolves around gold. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the limit that you must reach to for zakat to become obligatory on you is to have 20 mithqal, 20 golden coins at his time, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 20 golden coins those 20 golden coins are equal to 85 grams of gold 85 grams of gold so then look at 20 coins of gold at the time of the prophet let us took let us take it a, a practical day what's our practical days 20 golden coins are equal to 85 grams of gold 85 grams of gold so what's 85 grams of gold worth What's 85 grams of gold worth? Whatever 85 grams of gold are worth, it's the amount of money that you must reach to. It's the limit that you must reach. If you reach to it, then you must pay zakat. If you don't reach to it, then you don't have to pay zakat. Before I came, I checked the currency market and the one gram of gold, one gram of gold now is worth $39.62. One gram of gold is worth $39.62. And 62 cents. So let us say one gram of gold is worth $39. We times $39 by 85 grams. One gram of gold is worth 39. 
And the limit that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu had put the nisab is 85 grams. So we times 85 grams by 39, which equals to $3,315. $3,315. So we say the nisab, the limit, the amount of money that you must have before zakat becomes obligatory on you is $3,315. If you have $3,315 and above, then we say zakat is fard on you. You must pay zakat. If you earn less than that, then we say you don't have to pay zakat. So not anyone pays zakat. It's only those with a certain amount of money that they must pay zakat. What that certain amount of money? It is referred to gold. What gold? 85 grams of gold. Whatever 85 grams of gold are worth in your days, is that's how much the nisab and the limit that you must have before zakat becomes obligatory on you. So anyone that has less than $3,315, there's no zakat on them. Anyone who has $3,315 or above, then zakat becomes obligatory on them. Now, what kind of money are we talking about? We are talking about savings. We're not talking about cars. We're not talking about a house that you live in. We're not talking about the furniture that you have or the uh, electrical appliances that you use at home. We're not talking about that. All this personal use. Personal use is not counted into that. Personal use is not counted in the zakat. I have one car, two cars, ten cars that are used for my personal use. I have a house or two or three that are used for my personal use. I have furniture that's worth $100,000, but I use it for my personal use. These things, there's no zakat on them. You do not calculate them. We are talking about cash money. We are talking about money that you save. Money that you have in your hands, you have control of. It's in your savings or it's in your hands that's worth 3,315 Australian dollars. Or something that's equivalent to gold. You have, for example, gold. I don't keep money, I keep gold. We're not talking about the gold that the female uses for jewelry. Jewelry, gold jewelry, silver jewelry, there is no zakat on it. Although there is a disagreement amongst the scholars on that, but Imam Shafi is on the opinion that any personal use of gold and jewelry, there is no zakat. So if there is a female that she's got necklace of gold, gold necklace, gold ring, gold this, gold that, and she uses them, there's no zakat. Or she keeps them, but for herself, she probably uses them once every second year. But at the end of the day, that jewelry, that gold is for her. Not for her to buy and sell. It's for her personal use. There is no gold, there is no zakat in them. Imam Abu Hanifa is another opinion. He says, no, any type of gold, whether you personal use or not, you must pay zakat. But I take that perspective of Imam Shafi'i. Where Imam Shafi'i says, any personal use of gold, there is no zakat. Say your wife, your mother has gold whether it's 100 grams or even kilogram, and that she uses that for her personal use. And it's an acceptable amount of gold, not 10 kilograms of gold. Which woman has 10 kilograms of gold? Something like, you know, something reasonable, something that female have. You know, a few necklaces, a few rings, a few jewelry, this and that. She keeps them for herself. She wears them or she keeps them in a box or whatever. But at the end of the day, that's not there for the intention of buying and selling. So that does not go into the savings. So the $3,315, which is 85 grams of gold, it is applied on your savings. Applied on your savings. The money that you've saved and you've got it aside. Nothing to do with a house that's for personal use, furniture for personal use, cars for personal use. Jewelry for personal use, even though they have a lot of it, I have 10 houses and I have them for personal use, then all that you then have to pay zakat on. You pay zakat on the cash money or the gold that you have saved, you have saved and you've got it aside. Okay, how much that one need to have? As I mentioned, the limit that you must hit and become zakat or zakat becomes obligatory on you is anything that's worth 85 grams of gold, which these days it's 3,000. And 315. Or the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned 200 silver coins. 
200 silver coins. So back then, one gold coin is equal to, two, uh, equal to 10 silver coins. Like how we have the Australian dollar, one, one gold uh, dollar has got one, uh, 100, uh, 100 cents. Back then, they used to have one dinar. The one dinar is equivalent to 10 dirham. One dinar is equivalent to 10 dirham. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, either 20 dinar, which is 85 grams of gold, or 200 dirham, which is equivalent to 595 grams of silver. 595 grams of silver. 595 grams of silver. But most likely people go with gold because it is the most stable uh, metal and it's the most stable thing that people go with or precious metals as they say. So the limit, the nisab that I must pay on or the nisab, the limit that I must reach to for zakat to become obligatory on me is 85 grams of gold. How much is 85 grams of gold worth these days? Is $3,315. Anyone who has $3,315 will say zakat is obligatory on you. Anyone who has under that, then there is no zakat on them. Okay. This is the first condition, which is nisab. The second condition is murur al-hawl. What's murur al-hawl? Is one full lunar year must go past that money. One full lunar year must go past that money, and that money is 3,315 and does not go less. Okay. Let me give you more an example. Not... Not on the spot, not at that moment when I obtain or possess $3,315, I must pay zakat. Although the nisab says that you must have 85 grams worth of gold or whatever currency is equivalent to it, once I get that $3,315, it doesn't mean on the spot zakat becomes obligatory on me. 354 days must go past that money. 300. And 54 days, which is a lunar year. Not a solar year. A solar year is 365 days. We go in accordance to the lunar year. Once I receive that money, once I hit the limit of zakat, I must start counting 354 days. If 354 days go past, if 354 days go past my money, and my money is 3,315 or above, then after 354th day, that's when I pay the zakat. After the 354th day, I pay the zakat. Under the condition that my nisab, the limit that I had, my money did not go under it. My money did not go under it. If my money reduces and becomes under the limit of nisab, then there's no zakat on me. I restart all over again when I hit the nisab once again. I'll give you an example. In Ramadan, the first of Ramadan, I hit the nisab. I had in my hand 3,315. Before that, I never had that money. I had $3,000, I had $2,000, I had $300. But in first of Ramadan, I obtained $3,315 or above. I don't have to pay zakat on the spot. I have to wait for 354 days. If 354 days go past and I still have 3,315 or above, after the 354th day, I pay the zakat, which is 2.5%. So for example, the first of Ramadan, 2010, I had 3,315. Then one full year went past and my money just continued to increase. By the day of 354th day, the 354th day after that day of obtained the limit of zakat, I'll pay whatever I have, 2.5%. But if I obtained at the first of Ramadan, $3,315, then six months later, my money dropped. I went and bought something. I went and paid something. Whatever reason it is. Okay, after six months, my money dropped. It went down to $1,000. I had 3315 and then after two or three months or six months later, I went and bought a car or one paid rent or one paid electricity bill and my money dropped. What happens? I stop and there's no zakat on me and I restart all over again. The whole process when I hit the limit of zakat. Once again, when I hit the limit of zakat, I count 354 days. 
Now the other issue is, the other issue is, how much do you have to pay on? This is people ask. Whatever you have, whatever you have on your due day of zakat is what you pay on. So for example, 2010, first of Ramadan 2010, I had $4,000. Do I have to pay zakat or not? Yes, I'm above the 3,315. 2010, the first of Ramadan, I have $4,000. Before that, I had $2,000. The day before that, I had $2,000. Subhanallah, something happened the next day, a gift. Someone passed away from my family, obtained a bequest of wealth, whatever happened. I got paid, I reached the $4,000 on the first of Ramadan. Now I have to pay zakat. But I don't have to pay zakat on that day because I have to wait for 354 days. I waited for 354 days. First of Ramadan, 2011 came. So 354 days came. I obtained three. I obtained. I had four thousand dollars in the first of Ramadan 2010. Then one full year went past for 2011, the first of Ramadan. I've got twenty thousand dollars. My money. My money has been increasing throughout the year. How much do you have to pay zakat on? I pay zakat on the twenty thousand dollars. So whatever I have on my due day is what is what I have to pay out of. Whatever I have in my due day is what I have to pay off. I have, I'll give you another example. The first of Ramadan 2010, I had $4,000. Six months later, my money reached to $20,000. But on the 354th day, on the 354th day, which is Ramadan, the first of Ramadan 2011, I had $5,000. So I started with four. Halfway through the year, I went up to 20. And then by the end of the year, by the end of the lunar year, which is my due day of zakat, the first of Ramadan, I have only $5,000. What do I pay zakat on? I pay zakat on what I have on the 354th day, which is the $5,000. But someone will say, just two days ago, I had a million dollars. Well, the Sharia says, what you have on your due day is what you pay. As long as... You had 354 days and you've been above the nisab. Throughout the year, how much you went up high? How much you went up high? It does not matter as long as you do not get under the nisab. As long as you do not get under the 3,315. If you got under it, you stop. There's no zakat on you and restart all over again from the beginning. But if you went up high, you know, I'm due on the first of Ramadan. My zakat is due on the 1st of Ramadan 2011. One day before that, I had $1 million. One day before that, I had $1 million. And I paid for a house. I went and bought a house, $950,000. The next day, I have $50,000, which is my due day. What do I have to pay zakat on? On the $50,000. So it's depend, it, it all matters on what do you have on your due day. Someone says, but he done that to run away from zakat. If someone done that to run away from zakat, he's not going to run away from Allah. If someone done that to run away from zakat, he's not going to run away from Allah Azza wa Jal. But at the end of the day, it's your due date. What do you have on your due date is what you must pay. How much you want money went up, what you spent throughout the year, even if it's a day before, that's not counted. As long as your money does not drop under the nisab. As long as your money does not drop under the nisab. So this is the two major conditions. The first condition is you must obtain nisab, which is the limit where zakat becomes obligatory on you. What's a nisab? Is 85 grams of gold and whatever is worth 85 grams of gold. These days, one gram of gold is 39 Australian. So we times that by 85, we will come up with 3,315. If you reach 3,315, then zakat becomes obligatory on you. Before that, zakat is not obligatory on you. <coughs> Once I hit the nisab, I don't have to pay zakat on the spot. I have to wait for one full lunar year to go past. 354 days. Once 354 days go past, that's when I pay my zakat. And I pay on whatever, whatever I have. On the 354th day. How much I went up throughout the year, that's not counted. What I have on the 354th day is what I pay. Now the common question comes. Sheikh, I don't know when I obtained the first 3,315. This is the common question. 
I can't remember. I haven't paid zakah. I started to pray five years ago and I've had, you know, I've always been over 3,315 for the last 10 years and I don't know where to start. Then we say, start from every Ramadan. Take Ramadan as your day. Pay your zakat now. Pay your zakat now for the previous years and start on Ramadan. Let Ramadan be the first of Ramadan or the 10th of Ramadan or whatever in Ramadan. Let the days of Ramadan be your days that every year, whenever that day comes, is the day that you must pay your zakat. Because a lot of people didn't know this information, so they always ask, what do I have to pay on? Or when do I have to pay? So this is a simple thing of zakat. Zakat is all about two things, nisab and hawl. Limit and a full lunar year. The limit is 3,315, which is equivalent to 85 grams of gold. And the lunar year is 354 days. When, and the main thing is that you go 354 days and your money is above the nisab. I'll give you another example. In the first of Ramadan, I had $4,000. Six months later, I had $2,000. On the th after six months, I have $10,000. When do I pay my zakat? There's no zakat on me because my money dropped. My money dropped. I start, my mo I don't start, I start again when I obtained the amount of money that's above $4,000 and I count for 354 days. Because after six months, my money dropped, I missed out on zakat. That's it, I don't have to pay zakat. I restart all over again, even with the counting of days, when I obtain the nisab. Once I obtain the nisab, I count 354 days. If, I, if my money drops down of the nisab, then I restart all over again. Common question again, and I've already spoken about that, there is no zakat on personal use. No zakat on personal use, no zakat on furniture, no zakat on houses, no zakat on cars, no zakat on uh, electrical appliances, no zakat on computers. The only time zakat becomes obligatory on those if you are using them to buy and sell. If you are using them to buy and sell. And this is the second topic, is that when I have any product that I want to buy and sell, then zakat becomes obligatory on that product. So, for example, I have a shop that I sell computers, and my computers are above the two, uh, the above the nisab, which is three thousand and three hundred fifteen dollars. All my computers are worth more than that. By the end of the year, I must pay two point five percent, whether I pay it cash or I pay it two point five percent out of my computers. So, for example, if I had one hundred computers, I give out two and a half computers, chop a computer into half. No, you give out two computers, you want to give a third one or give whatever its value of, whatever its value of a, 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 a half a computer. So if I'm using my cars to buy and sell, then zakat becomes obligatory on my cars. If I'm using the furniture to buy and sell, then the furniture becomes obligatory on me to pay zakat. If I'm using the houses that I have to buy and sell, then it becomes obligatory on me. How do I pay the zakat on that? I calculate its value and I take out 2.5%. 2.5% must be taken out. Must be taken out of my wealth at the end of the lunar year. 2.5%. 2.5% I take it out of my money. I take it out of my business stock. I take it out of my wealth that I have to pay zakat. Okay, where does that money go? It goes to the categories of zakat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةِ قُلُوبٌ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ وَالْغَارِمِينَ وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهُ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ Faridah min Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned eight categories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned eight categories that the zakat goes to. Who are those eight categories? Al-Fuqara. Al-Faqir is a poor person. Al-Faqir is a poor person. Al-Miskin is also a poor person. But the scholars differentiate between a faqir and a miskin that the faqir, the poor, has the faqir is a lot of, uh, is a lot in need of money than the miskin. And they give an example. A faqir is someone that needs to live on five hundred dollars a week and he's only got a hundred dollars. Where a miskin needs to live on five hundred dollars and has got three hundred dollars. So a faqir is someone is more in need than a miskin. But both of them are the poor. What's a poor? Someone who is in need to live. Someone who is in need to live, does not have money, does not have income, you know, and that includes every type of person, whether they're orphans, whether they're old, whether they're young. If these people don't have money to live, then the zakat is permissible for them. 
And that also, and this is a common question, can I pay my zakat to my cousins? Yes, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you obtain two rewards. One reward for the zakat and the other reward for your kinship, for looking after and keeping ties with the cousins. Who are the type of cousins? Everyone, everyone excluding whomever you have responsibility over. Who do I have responsibility over? I have responsibility looking after my mom. I have a responsibility looking after my dad. So I have a responsibility looking after my father and mother. I have a responsibility looking after my kids, my son and daughter. I have a responsibility looking after my sister that's not married. That category I am responsible for. I can't pay zakat to them. My wife, I'm responsible to look after her. And that's why I can't pay zakat to her. But she can pay zakat to me. Because the wife is not responsible for looking after the husband. The husband is responsible to look after the wife financially. The wife in Islam, she is not responsible to look after the husband financially. That's why the zakat from the wife is permissible on the husband, but not vice versa. The husband is not allowed to pay his zakat to his wife because he is responsible to look after her. The, as we, as children, we cannot pay our zakat to our mothers and fathers. Why? Because I'm responsible to look after my mom and dad. I'm not allowed to pay my zakat to my daughter and son because I'm responsible to look after him. But my auntie, my brother, my uncle, my other cousins, it's sunnah and it's recommended for me to pay my zakat to them. Why? Because I'll get the rewards of paying zakat to them and I'll get the rewards of keeping ties with them. So it is permissible to pay zakat to those whom you don't have responsibility over. So the zakat goes to the faqir and goes to the miskin. And of course, I pay zakat to my cousins if they are poor. I pay zakat to my cousins if they are poor. I don't pay zakat to them if they are. They have to be in the categories of zakat. They have to be in the categories of zakat. So which are the categories of zakat? The poor. Those who are in need of money and they don't have enough income. Al-fuqara wal-masakeen. Wal-amilin alayha. Al-amilin alayha. Those who are employees to collect the zakat. The employees of zakat have the right to be paid from the zakat. But their payment is a salary, not a percentage. Where the fuqara and the masakin and the rest, you give them by percentage. The employee that goes around and collects zakat, especially at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, and these days, in some Muslim countries, they have an employee who goes around and collects a zakat. Doesn't he need to leave? Then his income can come out of the zakat. But he gets only a salary, not more than that. وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةُ قُلُوبَهُمْ Mu'allafa qulubah are those to soften their hearts. They're like who? Like a non-Muslim leader. That if you're going to give him money, he's going to soften his heart towards the Muslims and keep away his harm from the Muslims. Keep his harm away from the Muslims. So the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam gave a lot of the Arab leaders money. He gave them a lot of money, not for the sake of trying to bring them to Islam, and for the sake of keeping their harm away from the Muslims. But at the time of Umar, Umar said we don't have to do that because Izzah is to Islam. We don't need these people. There's honor to Islam these days. We don't need to you know, go up to them and you know, try and seek their help to keep the harm away from us. They're the ones who should be running to us. But Al-Mu'allafat Qulubuhum are those leaders, those with influence, those with strength, that if you're going to give them money, they're either going to come to Islam or keep harm away from Islam or Muslims. Wal-Gharimeen, Al-Gharimeen are those in debt. Someone who is in debt. Someone who is in debt. Especially if he's in debt because of a good cause. Because he tried to bring sulah, he tried to bring reconciliation between two groups. Because he tried to, you know, he, he's, on, he's in debt because he tried to solve a problem. Not someone who went and bought a house for a million dollars and is in debt uh, in the bank. These people should not be supported in any way or other. Someone who's in debt is someone who is in genuine debt. Genuine debt that Islam accepts, we could give them some of the money of zakat. وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهُ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ For the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal and the scholars say that are for the mujahideen or those who protect the interest of Muslims. Those who work for the interest of the Muslims, especially the mujahideen or those who protect the interest of the Muslims or public servants who protect the interest of Muslims. وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ is a traveler. A traveler who is stuck. A traveler who is stuck, came from, for example, from one country to another country and he wants to go back home but doesn't have money to go back home. So the money of uh, Sabilillah or the money of Zakat could go to these people. These days, mainly Zakat is used for the poor and the needed. They are the most important categories. And Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, 
If Muslims pay their zakat, there'll be not even one poor, not Muslim, one poor human being on the surface of this earth. If Muslims pay their zakat 2.5% every year, not even one human being will be poor on the surface of this earth. And that's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told Hatim al taim he said, by Allah will come to a time where someone will have a bag full of gold looking for someone, looking for someone to take that from them and that there's no one to take it. Everyone is rich. And it did happen at the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz where all Muslims were fearing Allah Azza wa Jal. Most Muslims were fearing Allah and everyone was paying their zakat and no one, there's no poor people. Everyone's rich. Everyone is rich. No one needs money anymore. You, you'll go around with a bag of gold saying, does anyone want this bag of gold? And there is no one to accept it because everyone is rich. And this is the whole idea of zakat. Uh, the idea of zakat is support one another. The idea of the zakat is, to, is, a, is a public service for everyone. The idea of the zakat is a social activity that brings everyone together. That, you know, this money that Allah Azza had given you. Allah says in the Quran Kareem, Allah, وَلَقَدْ فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بَعْدَكُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْدٍ فِي الرِّزْقِ Allah Azza wa Jal had made some of you better than others when it came to the rizq. Allah had given one person more than the other. So it's from Allah Azza wa Jal. And it's the right of Allah upon you that you give some of that wealth to the servants of Allah. Someone who is in need, someone who is poor, someone who is in debt. Give that money to them. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this Allah azza wa jal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from the punishment of the hellfire. So my brothers and sisters, zakat, zakat, zakat is an integral part of Islam. A very important principle of Islam. Every Muslim must pay their zakat. Every Muslim that has the nisab and there is one full lunar year when past the nisab, then they must pay the zakat. You cannot run away from Allah azza wa jal because at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, sees and hears what you do. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within yourself. Fear Allah azza wa jal within your wealth. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within yourself. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within your wealth. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge you over every single dollar. Where you got it from or where you put it to. And remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordained this order on you. Zakat, 2.5%. On anyone who possesses the nisab and one full lunar year when past that nisab. You must pay your zakat and you must give your zakat and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what Allah azza wa had given you. And inshallah we'll continue next week more on the zakat in which I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who listen and hear, act upon what they listen and hear. And I ask Allah azza wa to accept from us and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who obey and follow his orders. To listen to or download more Islamic lectures, please visit www.islamicmedia.com.au.